This 30th of March marked Van Gogh's 167th birthday. As you may know, it was also the day the Parsonage Garden at Noonan was stolen. Police in the Netherlands are searching for a Vincent van Gogh painting, the Parsonage Garden at Nijnen. A thief or thieves broke into the Singerlaren Museum at 3.15 a.m. and, taking advantage of slower response times from the police due to the coronavirus pandemic, they left swiftly. Van Gogh painted this artwork in May 1884. He moved to Noonan a couple of months earlier, in December 1883, and lived there two years with his parents, his father being the small town's pastor. Van Gogh painted this garden many times throughout his stay, documenting the seasons like Monet would with his Haystack series just four years later. This depicts the garden in spring. You see, of course, the garden framed by trees and vegetation. A woman dressed in black breaks the bareness of the scene as she turns around to look at us standing on a path which leads our eye to an old church. This church will also be the subject of a Van Gogh painting, Old Church Tower at Noonan. Just a couple of months after painting the Parsonage Garden at Noonan, Vincent Van Gogh painted his now famous Potato Ears. It's his first major artwork and, like the now stolen painting, it's very different from what we usually know him for. First, it isn't as bright and vibrant as his later paintings. It's earthy, dark, and gloomy. Second, it isn't a landscape or a self-portrait, but the depiction of a peasant family through a realist lens. Realism, pioneered by Gustave Courbet only three decades before, consisted of depicting reality as genuinely as possible, and this quest for authenticity is echoed all throughout Van Gogh's potato ears. But before talking about the painting's background, let's look at it a bit more thoroughly. It's a painting of peasants in the city of Noonan in the Netherlands. This type of painting wasn't unheard of at the time. In fact, the potato ears was inspired by Joseph Israel's A Peasant Family at the Table, made in 1882. Both paintings are similar in their subject matter, in the light coming from the center of the painting and in the positioning of the family members around the table. However, Van Gogh's depiction is much more intimate. We're closer to the family. We can see their facial features, their hands, and their clothes. We can also see small details in the background, such as the religious painting and the clock showing how late it is. All of these details reinforce the message Van Gogh wanted to convey. You see, I really have wanted to make it so that people get the idea that these folks, who are eating their potatoes by the light of their little lamp, have tilled the earth themselves with these hands they are putting in the dish, and so it speaks of manual labor and that they have thus honestly earned their food. This is what Vincent wrote to his brother Theo about the potato eaters on the 30th of April 1885. He wants to show us how these people work hard to survive. He shows how this labor left its mark on their rugged faces. He shows their sharp, bony hands, the ones they use to both plow the earth and eat their potatoes. And it's really through these specific details, the peasants' faces and hands, that Van Gogh achieves the authenticity he was aiming for. In the same letter sent to Theo, he wrote, Although I'll have painted the actual painting in a relatively short time, and largely from memory, it's taken a whole winter of painting studies of heads and hands. This really shows Van Gogh's dedication to depicting peasant life. I've become so absorbed in peasant life by continually seeing it at all hours of the day that I really hardly ever think of anything else. Van Gogh really wanted to depict peasant life genuinely. It would almost be insulting to paint peasants smoothly as it would undermine all the daily work they do to survive. This painting is dirty, it's earthy, it's cramped. It's not a comforting image and perhaps this is why it became popular only after Van Gogh's death. One would be wrong, to my mind, to give a peasant painting a certain conventional smoothness. 
If a peasant painting smells of bacon, smoke, potato steam, fine, that's not unhealthy. If a stable smells of manure, very well, that's what a stable's for. If the field has an odor of ripe wheat and potatoes or of guano and manure, that's really healthy, particularly for city folk. They get something useful out of paintings like this, but a peasant painting mustn't become perfumed. I'm curious as to whether you'll find anything in it that you like. I hope so. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far into the video, we encourage you to subscribe. Also, we'd like to thank Isak and every other patron for supporting us. If you want to join them in their support, check us out at patreon.com forward slash the canvas.